Pawn grabbing in the opening is a distraction which could lead you to serious trouble. Stick to controlling the center and getting your pieces out quickly. Thanks, Monica. In this lecture, we'll be taking a look at some games where one side goes pawn hunting in the opening and why you should avoid it in your own games. Let me just say something in advance. The reason why pawn hunting will often backfire is really simple. If you go after a pawn in the opening, you're wasting the time that your pieces need to come out and control the, cent the center. You can't have it both ways. You know, control the center, develop your pieces, and on top of that, win some pawns along the way. Come on, would you like your opponent to stand there and give you a round of applause as well? Well, you know, get real. I mean, you want everything, don't you? Greed is often punished in both life and chess. Let's get on with the games. d4, d5, c4, and now black takes here. This is a queen's gambit accepted. Black takes that pawn, but he shouldn't try to hang on to it for too long. White's threatening to take back, and now black decides to defend that pawn. A very risky move that creates some weaknesses in black's position. White now plays this strong move, which tries to undermine those pawns. If black now takes on a4, then we'll take on c4 with our bishop, and then that pawn on a4 is going to be weak for the rest of the game. White normally wins it back in no time. So black cannot play a6 here, because then we take on b5, and the pawn on a6 is pinned. Black cannot take back, because he would lose, he would lose his rook. So, another move he can play is the one that he chose in the game, c6. So, black is thinking that he can hang on to his pawn, but that's not the case, because here, white can simply take on b5, and when black takes back, look at this diagonal, it's a very weak diagonal, and white can play queen to f3, winning material. Black is losing at least a piece now. The only way to protect the rook is to go knight c6, but he's losing a piece. Check, he can put the bishop in between and now the rook is protected, but now we can just retreat our queen and we're a piece up. Let's see another example. d4, f5, knight to c3, white would like to play e4 next. So black stops it, white develops another piece, and now maybe white threatens to go, bishop takes an e4 or something similar, so black now chooses d5 to prevent that, but then white can take on f6 and damage um, black's pawn structure, and then e3, c6, bishop to d3, queen to b6, attacking this pawn, and already I don't particularly like that move, it's a very simple threat, and white could easily defend against it, but he does it in a very subtle way, he goes a3. And now black's thinking that he can take that pawn for free, just like that. I mean, you know, if your opponent gives you a pawn like that, you threaten a pawn and your opponent seems to be doing nothing to defend it, you know, maybe you should investigate why he's doing that. And unfortunately, black didn't do that. He took that pawn and now after knight to a4, the queen is trapped. It has nowhere to go. He's got to give up material, like he's got to go queen takes rook, but obviously white's winning after queen takes queen. So pawn grabbing gets punished once again. Let's see our third game. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop here, and now this unusual move, knight to d4. Here white can take on d4, and that's probably the best move. Taking on e5 is extremely risky. White thinks he can win a pawn, and he gets a little bit greedy. He thinks, all right, I've won a pawn, and I'm attacking f7 as well. How can this move possibly be wrong? Well, guess what? It is wrong, because black now goes queen to g5. Now, that knight is under attack, and so is the pawn on g2. Here, white now takes on f7, thinking that he's done a knight fork, but the consequences are going to be terrible because black now takes on g2, the rook is under attack, he needs to protect it, and now black takes on e4, check, and when white blocks the check with bishop e2, guess what's going to happen? Knight to f3, and the white king gets checkmated. 
Three basic examples of the consequences of pawn hunting. Avoid pawn hunting. Focus on development and control of the center instead.